Good evening and welcome to TV Duansan News of the Week. My name is Emma Doe. In what's making headlines this week? An investigation into the Dong Dum land dispute is launched. The Vietnamese asylum seekers turned back by Australia, now granted refugee status. And topless hairdressers cause a stir in Hanoi. In this week's top story, Victoria Police are appealing for public assistance to help locate missing 14-year-old girl Jennifer Lee. Jennifer was last seen at a school on the crossing in Caroline Springs at about 9.15am on Monday last week. This is the second time Jennifer has gone missing in the past few weeks. Last month, Jennifer and her two friends went missing for several days after they were last seen in Canley on May 20. The girls were found safe, but police and Jennifer's family now hold concerns for her welfare because of her age and the length of time she's been missing. Jennifer is Asian in appearance with a slim build and long black hair. Police say she is known to hang out around the St Albans, Sunshine and Melbourne CBD areas and likes to attend video game arcades. Anyone who sees Jennifer is urged to contact Caroline Springs Police Station on 9361 4700. An official investigation has been launched into the Dong Thum land dispute, which resulted in villagers holding 38 officials hostage. Police in Hanoi will focus on the seizing of officials and police officers during the standoff, as well as deliberate vandalism by villagers. During hostage negotiations, the mayor of Hanoi, Nguyen Duc Jung, told villagers that none would be prosecuted following the release. It's not yet clear whether the latest investigation will seek to charge villagers involved in the incident. Under Vietnamese law, anyone found guilty of illegal detention can face up to five years in prison. The hostage situation arose in Dong Thum village after police detained four locals for using disputed land. Angry villagers responded by detaining 38 police officers and government officials in a communal house in a standoff that lasted a week. Locals lay claim over what they say is agricultural land, but officials say the land belongs to the military. Earlier this year, the military-owned telecoms company Viettel sparked tensions when it began working to build an airport in the disputed land without compensating villagers. Disgruntled locals said they hadn't been informed of the land transfer to the military, but say they would have complied with the law if they'd known. The state technically owns all land in Vietnam, but grants land use rights for private use. Prominent blogger and environmental activist Nguyen Ngoc Nhu Nguyen has been formally charged by the Hanoi government for anti-state propaganda, according to VOA Vietnamese News. Nguyen, also known as Mother Mushroom, faces up to 12 years in prison if found guilty. She's been charged with three criminal counts under Article 88, which outlaws propaganda against the state. The vaguely worded law has drawn international criticism for the power it gives the government to suppress dissent. In March, Gwen received the US State Department's International Women of Courage Award. The 37-year-old was the only honoree unable to attend the Washington DC ceremony because she was in prison. Gwen has been detained since October last year. The Vietnamese government has stripped a French Vietnamese and mathematics lecturer and former political prisoner of his Vietnamese citizenship. According to the AFP news agency, 62-year-old Pha Minh Huang was a dual citizen. In 2011, he was sentenced to three years in jail for attempted subversion, but was released after 17 months and ordered to serve three years of house arrest. Pha was convicted for writing a series of articles under the pen name Phan Gin Quoc. Prosecutors say his writing tarnished the country's image and was aimed at overthrowing the government. In May, Huang received a letter signed by President Jun Dai Quang informing him of the Vietnamese government's official decision to revoke his nationality. Revoking Huang's citizenship effectively renders his status illegal in Vietnam. A 30-year-old Uber driver in Malaysia's state of Penang has been charged with sexually assaulting a Vietnamese woman. The Georgetown Magistrates Court charged Mohamed Sukri Ramli with using criminal force with intent to outrage the modesty of Jun Thi Thu Thuan. Local media reports that the Uber driver was arrested after exposing his genitals to the 43-year-old passenger. Mohammed has pleaded not guilty to the charge. If found guilty, the charge carries a jail term of up to 10 years, a fine, whipping or any two combinations upon conviction. The case is set for mention on July 18. 
A Vietnamese student who stole over $1,500 worth of items from seven stores at Changi Airport in Singapore has been fined. Nguyen Thi Ngoc Lang stole 14 items including chocolates, cosmetics and a branded bag from Longchamp at a transit hall while waiting for her flight home on June 3rd. Local broadcaster Channel News Asia reports that the 20-year-old was fined 1,800 Singaporean dollars after she pleaded guilty to three charges of theft. Wing will be serving eight days in prison as she could not pay the fine. On each count of theft, Wing could have been jailed up to three years and or fined. Three Vietnamese mothers and their children whose boats were turned back by Australia two years ago have been granted refugee status by the United Nations. Trần Thị Thân Loang, Trần Thị Lua and Nguyễn Thị Phúc and their children have been living in detention in Jakarta since the end of January this year. The trio's lawyer announced their recently granted refugee status via a Facebook post. The families were among 92 Vietnamese asylum seekers who were intercepted at sea back in 2015. The Australian government forcibly returned the boats to Vietnam after it received written assurance from the Vietnamese government that the asylum seekers would not be punished upon arrival. But it later came to air that several individuals were imprisoned on their return. Luang and Lua were also threatened with 15 years in prison for helping to organise the asylum seeker boats. The three mothers and their children subsequently fled to Australia by boat for a second time at the start of this year, only to be rescued by Indonesian authorities after their boat began sinking 10 days into the trip. Luang says she originally left Vietnam in 2015 because the government had seized her land. She also states discrimination against her religion and loss of livelihood due to Chinese fishing in Vietnamese waters as motivating factors. In December 2016, Australia's Immigration Minister Peter Dutton signed a formal agreement with Vietnam's Public Security Minister to return Vietnamese nationals with no legal right to enter or remain in Australia. A hair salon in Vietnam's capital of Hanoi has made headlines this week for its topless male hairstylists. In a widely circulated video online, four men wearing only pants and a necktie are seen welcoming female customers into the salon. But despite excitement over the video, customers have found out that topless men are not part of daily service. Instead, the men in the video appeared only for a special event and their services only extended to washing and drying hair. The salon is not the only business to pull a topless stunt in a bid to lure in more customers. A restaurant in Hanoi has also employed topless male waiters at an in-store event. A customer speaking to Yanji News Agency said she was disappointed to find that the men only appeared for two minutes when the restaurant introduced new dishes. That hasn't stopped images of the event being shared across Vietnamese social media. In 2012, Vietjet Air was fined 20 million Vietnamese dong for an in-flight bikini show celebrating its first flight between Ho Chi Minh City and Nha Trang. Back to news in Australia. Police in Perth have frozen bank accounts linked to two Vietnamese nationals which contain more than $1 million. A 44-year-old man and a 36-year-old woman have been charged in the ongoing investigation after police picked up on their suspicious financial transactions. Police searched the pair's home in the Perth suburb of Morley, where they seized $10,000 along with other items of interest. The pair has been charged with possessing properties suspected of being the proceeds of crime. A local classical pianist led a charity concert last night in Melbourne's Avondale Heights. Guests were treated to pianist Anne Anthu Wing's spectacular performance of a Mozart piano trio. Violinist Maxim Shiko, flautist Elise Faith and celloists Daiming Tan and Tai Ching Chu also took to the stage set up in St Martin de Pau's parish church. To end the show, all five musicians joined forces to perform George Bizet's Melodies from Carmen. The concert raised a total of $5,800, which will be directed into the Vincent Orphanage in Vietnam. That's all from DV Thuan San, News of the Week. For more stories, you can follow DV Thuan San at tvtsonline.com.au and Facebook at DV Thuan San. 
I'm Emma Doe. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to your company at the same time next week.